a very good evening to you. And welcome along once again to Sweet and Swing here on Max Radio. Howard Kane with you for the next hour with some of the best sounds from long ago and far away. And what have we got? Some Zez Comfrey piano rolls. Haven't had that before, I think. After hours with Andre Previn and friends. Lovely laid back stuff. We're going to have a little bit of a retrospective of the great Noel Coward, don't you know? To start off, something of a nocturne. Good tune, isn't it? Good tune, that Harlem Nocturne. A standard written by Earl Hagen back in the day, uh, lyrics by Dick Rogers, and written as far back. It sounds actually remarkably modern even now, doesn't it? Got that lovely sort of slightly mysterious, bit of a sleazy sort of sound to it, maybe. I uh, love it, I must admit. Um, 1939, it was written for the Ray Noble Orchestra and then chosen by the big band leader Ray Brooks the next year as his theme song. Uh, the Viscounts uh, released it later on and it peaked at number 39 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart later in the 50s. A later version, 
I had to remind myself of this. As soon as you hear it, you think, oh, that was a TV series, wasn't it? It was a TV theme, that. So for an extra point, were they needed? And not that there's any prizes. So points don't mean prizes on Sweet and Swing, I'm afraid. They just mean a clap on the back and pour yourself another whatever you like. But what was that TV show? A version of, uh, with Bud Shank on the alto. It was the theme song of a television series. And it's, uh, I think it's follow-on as well, kept the same theme tune. It was a cop show, I think. Anyone shouting at the radio? The television series Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer. And the new Mike Hammer. And then later on, there was a version for the soundtrack to the film Tango and Cash, so it's been well used. You can understand why, though. It's a terrific song. Like I said, it's really got a great catchy hook there and is very evocative of something, something slightly sleazy and maybe, you know, a little bit suspicious or mysterious, something on those lines. I like it a lot. Anyway, that was a great way to get us going. Uh, lovely to have your company, as ever, on a Friday night here on Sweet and Swing. And any thoughts, anything you'd like to hear, drop me a line anytime. Always delighted. And I'm pleased to say we've had a couple of emails of late, which uh, we'll come to one or two a little bit later on with some suggestions, and uh, I think we might be able to help with one or two. We always will, if we can. If we can find the music and we can play it, we will do. Most of it's out of copyright. <laughs> and most of it's really, really good. Some terrific tunes, some of which might not have heard or the light of day. Can you hear the light of day? Might not have seen the light of day or heard the open air, the ears of a willing listener for many a year, I dare say. Certainly not on the radio, the wireless, on a day-to-day -day basis, shall we say. But yes, a couple of requests uh, and a couple of listeners been in contact, which is lovely. So we'll come to those a little bit later on. Also, um, Noel Coward, I was looking again through some of the stuff I've been gradually uh, importing up to uh, the Black Satanic Mill on the Hill up here at Manx Radio from uh, Music Man Towers, secreting into the archives, hopefully without anyone noticing. Getting tricky now because there's quite a few hundred of them. But the, the Noel Coward album, with a very debonair picture of Noel on the front in white jacket, carnation, pink, of course, pink, uh, waistcoat uh, and a fag in hand, very loose. I suppose you'd have to airbrush out the cigarette these days, uh, such as it is. Where should we go from here? How about, oh, this is more me. I'm not so much uh, Mike Hammer and private investigator, I think, or coppers. Uh, this one, Lazy Bones. <laughs> Lazy bones, sleeping in the sun Hard you expect to get your day's work done You'll never get your day's work done Sleeping in the noonday sun Lazy bones, sleeping in the shade Hard you expect to get your cornmeal made You'll never get your cornmeal made Sleeping in the evening shade When taters need spraying I bet you keep praying The slugs fall off of the vine And when you go fishing I bet you keep wishing The fish won't grab at your line you're a lazy bone, loafing through the day. Hard you expect to make a dime that way. You'll never make a dime that way. Well, looky here. He never heard a word I say.
Ah, yes, that's more me. I think Lazy Bones, Ambrose and his orchestra with uh, Sam Brown taking the vocals. I don't know, I'd recognise him there necessarily, uh, but one of the preeminent singers of the sort of wartime and uh, immediate post-war years as well. And of course, as we often remark here, because we like to claim as our own, he in later life came over briefly. I'm not quite too sure how long for, but he did come over to the Isle of Man and ran a sweet shop for a while. Yes. Uh, Walpole Avenue, I believe, according to the old maestro, uh, but I think that's now lost in the history of time. But he definitely did come here and run a, a sweet shop at some stage, born in uh, East London in uh, 1898, one of 11 children. How do people manage that? It's a wonder they managed time to do anything else, really. Started off singing as a chorister and then went on to record with Jack Hilton in the late 1920s and uh, Jack Jackson as well, and then made something around a hundred records with Hilton, including sessions in Berlin and Milan, and then came back to Britain again. Uh, First recorded with Ambrose Band on the 8th of February 1930 on the Decca label, with uh, a little kiss each morning and body and soul. He also uh, went out with... uh, Ambrose to Monte Carlo and Biarritz. I think that's where Ambrose gambled away all the band, all the band's earnings in the tables. Yeah, a bit of a weakness, I think, with Ambrose, the older gambling and the tables and such like. Um, his first wife, I think, died at quite an early age. And a little fact here I found, which I didn't know, in uh, on November the 3rd, 1941, Sam Brown was travelling by train to fulfil an engagement at the Hippodrome in Bristol when something crashed through the window of the train compartment and Brown fell to the floor. It was found he'd been shot in the jaw and neck. Lord, this was in Britain. I mean, you know, one assumes it wasn't necessarily war-associated. I don't think uh, we had too many shootings from German soldiers actually on British soil. When the train reached Bath, Brown was taken to hospital and had an operation to remove the bullet. The mind boggles. And in the early 50s, he recovered, of course. He, uh, trading as Sam Brown, set up an employment agency and training school for theatrical artists at 11A St James's Place, London, SW1. And it was known, not surprisingly, as Sam Brown Studios. Fantastic life. Amazing that they're getting shot. I don't know whether they've actually... doesn't say whether they apprehended the shooter or why indeed he was shot or whether it was just kids or what was going on. But I suppose there, there'd be a lot of bullets around, be a lot of guns around at that time. Might have just been an accident. Who knows? Who knows? Sweet Swing, H with you. Zez Confrey, a man you might well have heard of, uh, although doesn't feature that often these days. I actually have heard him once or twice on Radio 3 in recent months. But this is one I found, which I don't think we've ever featured before. Zez Confrey, Piano Rolls and Scores, realised by Artis Woodhouse. Well, there's two that you think of if you think of Zez Confrey, don't you? Kitten on the Keys and this one, Dizzy Fingers. <laughs> Thank you. 
can see why it'd be called Dizzy Fingers. Remember the old maestro play, and that uh, I never got anywhere near it. Zez Comfrey, piano rolls and scores. Uh, Zez, uh, well, I often wonder why it's called Zez. It's his middle name, or at least an abbreviation of it. He was born in uh, Peru, Illinois, in 1895, Edward Elzier Comfrey. Uh, and so Zez will be, I'm assuming, a shortening of, a shortening of his middle name, Zez, I'm guessing. Uh, where he moved in the early teens, he studied at Chicago Musical College and uh, had a great love of Debussy and Ravel and also really rather liked uh, Grieg as the uh, some of his piano music and obscure composers such as Charles Wakefield Cadman and uh, Eastwood Lane and Christian Sinding immersed himself in lots of popular songs and piano rags and sort of put them all into a melting pot and came up with his own distinctive style. Uh, had a real breadth of composing skills, taking in lots of different influences, like, as I say, <laughs> Grieg, Edvard Grieg, for example, and doing sort of parodies in many ways of classical music, uh, and also a lot of that sort of stuff as well. Some of the more novelty ones, like Kitten on the Keys, very, very popular indeed, and then doing that lovely bouncing oompa left hand dum 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 bum 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 going on there very accurately as well. Uh, fantastic technique on the piano and yeah, still very, very musical and listenable today, even though you don't often hear Zez Comfrey on the radio anymore. The player pianos and the piano rolls are a great fixture in American popular music through the early part of the 1930s, and then gradually, of course, they were replaced by radio and records and such like, and the, the pianolas and the player pianos disappeared. And because of the inability of most player pianos to reproduce subtleties of touch and dynamics, their sound could, could end up being a bit monochromatic. We had an old player piano. It didn't sadly work, but it was a player piano that we still have it up at, uh, I'm not quite too sure who's going to give it a home. Hopefully we'll find a good one for it. But it was the old maestro's favourite piece. It was a uh, favourite piano, I should say, not piece. And he just liked the touch of it. The innards, sadly, had to be removed pretty much, but you could still see the old, there were doors at the front where the pedals would be to pedal it along. There were doors behind the music stand where the actual music roll went. And then a flap folded down on the front edge of the piano, and there were the controls. And with these controls, which you manipulated with your hands, you gave some colour and contrast and dynamics to the music, exactly as it says here. Without those, the music would just be da -da -da, all on a monotone. So you could actually give it some volume and some subtlety and some colour using these various levers on the front. I'd love to know what it would have sounded like back in the day. The recording we've just heard there is a bit of a mix and that it is sort of coming from Comfrey's original piano roll but it's uh, using 20th century technology with 21st century innovation as it says on the CD using the Yamaha Disclavier uh, a modern sort of version of the player piano using a digital music to actually play and but you get the sound of Comfrey coming through albeit in a lovely nice clear rendition and a few notes itself on the Dizzy Fingers itself. This composition, as it suggests, might be considered a jazz age answer to Chopin's Minute Waltz, which goes at a fair old lick as well. Relatively easy to master at a slow tempo, you speak for yourself, it springs to life only at a very quick speed. Perhaps Comfrey's second most popular novelty work, yes, I would agree, after Kitten on the Keys. It alternates a graceful, unsyncopated strain with passages featuring tricky rhythms and dissonant harmonies. Difficult to play at any speed, if you ask me, one way or another. I've tried it. If you don't believe me, get yourself a piano and see what you think. Mr Noel Coward is in the wings. Let's bring him in. Mr Irving Berlin often emphasises sin in a charming way. Mr Coward, we know, wrote a song or two to show sex was here to stay. Richard Rogers, it's true, took a more romantic view of this sly biological urge, but it really was Cole who contrived to make the whole thing merge. He said that Belgians and Greeks do it, nice young men who sell antiques do it, let's do it, let's fall in love. Monkeys, whenever you look, do it, Ali Khan and King Farouk do it, let's do it, let's fall in love. Luella Parsons can't quite do it. <laughs> but she's so highly strung. 
Marlena might do it, but she looks far too young. Each man out there shooting crap does it. Davy Crockett in that dreadful cap does it. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. All famous writers in swarms do it. Somerset and all the moms do it. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. The Brontes felt that they must do it. Ernest Hemingway could just do it. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. E. Allan Poe, ho, 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 did it. But he did it in verse. H. Beecher Stowe did it, but she had to rehearse. Tennessee Williams, self-taught, does it. Kinsey with a deafening report, does it. Let's do it, let's fall in love. In the spring of the year, inhibitions disappear and our hearts beat high. We had better face facts, every gland that overacts has an alibi. For each bird and each bee, each slap happy sappy tree, each temptation that lures us along. Is just nature, el man, merely singing us the same old song. In Texas, some of the men do it. Others drill a hole and then do it. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. West Point cadets forming fours do it. People say all those gabars do it. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. My kith and kin more or less do it. Every uncle and aunt, but I confess to it. I've one cousin that can't. <laughs> Teenagers squeezed into jeans do it. Probably will live to see machines do it. Let's do it, let's fall in love. Each baby bat after dark does it. In the desert, Wilbur Clark does it. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. We are told that every hormone does it. Victor Borger all alone does it. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. Each tiny clam you consume does it. Even Liberace we assume does it. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. It's still good today, actually, isn't it? He, he was a past master at that wonderful louche, off-the-cuff, although well-rehearsed and beautifully polished delivery he had in that uh, upper-crust cl- manner. Noel Coward with perhaps one of his uh, better-known uh, numbers. Let's do it. What was he? Well, an all-round entertainer, I suppose, wasn't he? Uh, he was consummate without a doubt, a dandy, a composer, an author, a uh, bon viveur, and, as it uh, remarks here, was to the sleek and shining Art Deco age of chrome-plated modernism and frosted glass what Oscar Wilde had been to the late 19th century. Wilde, uh, with his slicked back hair and his crooked smile, Noel's well-cut clothes and breezy manner he represented, the elegance of the wit and the self-mocking urbanity of London's West End between the two world wars. Yes, beautifully put that was as well. I must admit, people just, it was a form of escapism, as you could tell, very clever and went down particularly well uh, with the crowds, with some of the characters now forgotten, I suppose, but you could almost rewrite it, couldn't you, with well-known characters in the late 20th century or early 21st century. A master of the English language, a great master of rhyme and rhythm and melody, and perhaps one of the last in in a long line of great British gentil entertainers like George Grossmith, who uh, one half of the uh, George and Whedon Grossmith, of course, did the uh, diary of a somebody or diary of a nobody it was sorry wasn't it i think later on there was a parody called diary of a somebody i think the original was diary of a nobody with mr pooter and uh, his wife and son terrific stuff we'll have more uh, from noel coward next week we'll dig in and out of that over the uh, 
coming weeks, I think. And possibly the Zev Comfrey, Zev Comfrey as well. I rather rather liked that one. A sweet and swing. It is H with you still to come. Uh, we will be having some after hours, some nice laid back stuff with Andre Previn in the company of Joe Pass on guitar and Ray Brown on the bass. Might get a bit of Oscar Peterson in if uh, we're lucky. I can't remember whether we finished off Women and Jazz. I'll have a look at that whilst I'm thinking on whether we actually managed to go through all the Women and Jazz on that great collection we've been enjoying over the last a few weeks. For now, we'll just say bye-bye to the blues. Bert Lown and the boys. <laughs>
That's lovely stuff, isn't it? Not surprisingly, André Prévin at the keyboard, a wonderful pianist, well, a wonderful musician all round, really, obviously a fantastic conductor as well, and one of those artists who seemed just as at ease in front of a full orchestra doing the classics as he was in a small, intimate setting playing top-quality jazz. And as if to prove it, there's this very CD, actually, which is just called Andre Previn After Hours with Joe Pass, the wonderful Joe Pass, uh, sadly no longer with us on uh, bass and on the guitar, I should say, Ray Brown, of course, on the bass. And <laughs> it's remarked on the notes saying, you might say it was a busy weekend for Andre Previn, Sunday afternoon, March the 26th, 1989. Sounds recent, you forget it's 40 years ago almost. He conducted the Los Angeles Philharmonic in a Beethoven and Tchaikovsky programme which concluded, concluded with the emotionally wrenching Pathétique Symphony. The next evening, as pianist for the Philharmonic Chamber Music Society concert, he knocked off such finger-busting works as Prokofiev's Cello Sonata and Mendelssohn's Piano Trio in D minor. And 48 hours later, he slipped into another concert hall across town to make this record, his first jazz album in 27 years. God, he hadn't done jazz for 27 years when he played this. He rocketed to famous jazz pianists way back in the 50s, of course, playing with the likes of Shelley Mann, Dizzy Gillespie, Benny Goodman, Billy Holiday, Shorty Rogers. Yes, through all that time, he was playing jazz, at the, but at the same time active as a composer and conductor in the Hollywood film studios with more than 60 jazz recordings to his name. Amazing talent. I'll keep that one in the bag as well, I think, for now. We'll come back to that. Lots of great tunes on that one. You can't go wrong with that trio, realistically, can you? Before that, Bye Bye Blues, wonderful wartime number. Uh, just pre-war, I think it was, but uh, it was very popular around that era. As you can imagine, and post the sort of Great Depression and such like, when things were, well, perhaps much as they are now, troubled around the world, shall we say. Although I suppose you could argue, is there ever a time when there isn't a trouble around the world? It doesn't seem to be. It's just either more or less. Yes, but there was Bert Lown and his orchestra 
playing that one. Good version as well. Buy by Blues uh, with Bert Lowen and his Hotel Biltmore Orchestra with Frank Luther on the vocals. Uh, recorded well, quite a bit earlier than the, the one we've just been listening to. 59 years earlier to be exact. July 19. 19- 30. Bert Lowne, born in New York, is a sideman playing with a Fred Ham's band. Originally, he was a violinist, an orchestra leader, and also a songwriter as well, and uh, composed the one we heard there, Great Standard, by, by Blues, probably his best number, I dare say. Didn't stay in the music industry for all of his life. Uh, by the mid-30s, so a few years after that recording was made, He quit leading orchestras. He went into the booking business, booking agent and a manager, and eventually left music altogether and moved on. Times move on, don't they? And he moved with the times. He took on executive positions in the television industry and died in the year of my birth, 1962. Now then, I did say, didn't I, at the beginning, uh, a letter has flooded in, as they say. And I'm sorry I haven't a clue. Well, yes, we have had a little bit of communication of late, and thank you very much indeed. You know the address if you want to send an email, Kane at manxradio.com, Kane, C-A-I-N-E, and uh, that will get to me very nicely. Or you can put pen to paper, as uh, John Cannell quite often does. Always lovely to hear from him, as we have done quite recently. And you can write to uh, Howard at Sweet and Swing, Manx Radio Broadcasting House, Douglas Head Douglas in the Isle of Man, I M 1 5 B for Bravo, W for Whiskey, if you're of a phonetic alphabet persuasion. And yes, another, another lovely card from John recently. We'll come round to that in the next week or so. In the meantime, a nice email uh, popped in from uh, Peter and Andrea. Hello, how do we enjoy listening to Sweet and Swing, sometimes live on Friday evenings on AM via 1368, more usually a few evenings after the broadcast by using the on-demand service. We've been listening for many months, but it was only recently following your mention of the podcasts. And don't forget, of course, the show is podcast every week, so you can subscribe to that, or if you prefer, just go along to the Manx Radio website on your laptop or your PC or whatever you've got and uh, go to podcasts, go down to Sweet and Swing, and shortly after the programme has been broadcast live, you can download it as a podcast and listen where and when you want, as often as you want. Free. How about that? Not a bad thing, is it? Not often you get something for nothing. But uh, we're now able to listen to some of the older programmes as well, as says Peter. The music you play is very rarely heard on stations anymore. I think that's true. So I'm very pleased you're keeping the music from the period alive and with your knowledge and informative comments make for essential weekly listening. Well, thank you very much indeed. That's very kind. Perhaps, if possible, would you be kind enough to play Moonlight Bay? I see there were quite a few artists who recorded it, but my dad had a 78 RPM record with Glenn Miller on the Brunswick label, but it and quite a few others got broken many years ago. They were rather fragile, the old shellac, weren't they? I'm not quite too sure to do with the old maestros, and I'm wondering whether I can bring... He did have, because we bought it for him for his 70th birthday, maybe, a modern Riga 78 player, so a modern... Ma- uh, record player manufacturer who made a modern machine to play 78s with a specialist stylus. I should really bring it up here, shouldn't I, if I can squeeze space and and to convince the powers that be we could play some 78s. What about that, do you reckon? In the meantime, oh, there's a few other thoughts uh, John says as well. He's also looking for a coming in on a wing and a prayer. Uh, I managed to find it via the internet, or most things on the internet, says Peter, but... Uh, I've yet to find one that sounds like my dad's 78. Artist and label unknown. Another breakage, I'm afraid. He does say that his dad bought his records shortly after the war in which he served in the RAF. So the songs probably had a special meaning to him. Now I'm enjoying the music from the period Long Live Your Programme, says Peter. And they are writing from... I'm not going to attempt that part, Peter. A clan... No, I'm not going to do it. Near Ag, near Abergelly. That'll do me. North Wales. Near Abergelly in clan... No, I won't. I'll only only embarrass myself and embarrass you, Peter, by getting it wrong. But lovely, listening over there in uh, North Wales, near Abergelly. And yes, I haven't got the 78 player going here, but I think this might be the Glenn Miller you were thinking of. I hope so. Thank you. 
listen to that. You can even hear the needle in the groove there, Peter. I hope that was the one uh, you were thinking of, or at least the one that your dad had on the old Brunswick label. That's as close as I could get in any case looking around, but it sounds like it, it to me from what you're saying. So either way, it's definitely Moonlight uh, Bay, which is a great track, isn't it? Uh, and the boys all sound there. So modern, don't they? You hear these young guys none of whom I assume will be alive anymore now. There they were singing along, and I don't know, you can just sort of picture them. Yeah, we're singing along. Yeah, full of youth and vigour and not living perhaps in the best of times in the middle of war and yet looking forward to better things. Hopefully, some of them fared better than Major Miller himself and uh, went on to have some life after the war as well. We like to think so, don't we? We like to think so. I did promise you a bit of uh, Oscar Peterson. That was another one that's pitched up. You can never go wrong with a little bit of Oscar. Uh, such a fine player uh, from, well, I don't know, 30, 40 years. And I did see him a couple of times, I'm uh, happy to say, including his last ever time in Britain, which wasn't as good as it might have been. But the time before that was uh, excellent. Here we are. This, this should uh, put a smile on everyone's face. We're getting there. We are getting there very slowly, but hopefully surely towards this time of the year. Yes, summertime.
Oh, lovely stuff. Lovely stuff indeed. Summertime with Oscar Peterson on the keyboards. Beautiful stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll drop in a bit more Oscar. I don't play enough Oscar really. And, and I know he's a great favourite of the old maestro as well. Um, lots and lots of CDs. I don't know. Even, I don't even know if I've managed to transport them all up here, but plenty of music to go out of there. It is Sweet and Swing. Uh, Howard here with you. Don't forget, Howard Kane at MaxRadio.com. Always lovely to hear from you. And uh, yes, great to hear from Peter there. Um, I think uh, Father Sean got a request. I think we'll play next week for, yes, something a bit different, a couple I'd never heard of, a modern couple who do sort of a boogie-style piano. I think we dug a little bit of that bit out, which we'll play. And I think John has been in contact as well on the Isle of Man um, with a request. And we'll see what we can do about that, John, in the next week or two as well. In the meantime, uh, let's go back to the 1930s or thereabouts, mid-1930s, I would think. And a question. Who walks in when I walk out? In this case, I think it's Rhiannon Evans. <laughs> Good number. Good number 1934 to be exact. Who walks in when I walk out? The Madame Tussauds Orchestra with Annette Keith taking the vocals. Who's she? I hear you all ask. Um, you know what? I don't really know at all. Um, not a name that rings a bell particularly. Um, not a bad or not a classic singer. It certainly fits that song very nicely. That sort of style she had almost sort of speaking at times. Uh, even the Bible we turn to when uh, all else is lost, England's second book of British dance bands, the singer and smaller bands, manages all of two lines about Annette Keith, recorded with Joe Loss and Stanley Barnett's Madame Tussauds band. That's all we can say about her. That's all I can say about her. Of course, if you can say more about her, as usual, get in touch. <laughs> I'm plugging this because it's nice to hear more from you and we've been getting a little bit more, so let's see if we can build on that. Or indeed the old Far Away Club. I mean, North Wales, that's a reasonable distance from Cronkavody or Douglas Head. But you might be listening in, I don't know, Botswana, Peru, Antarctica, Ohio. And if you are, via the wonders of the web and podcast, drop me a line, howardkane at maxradio.com. Give us a mention, think of a tune you'd like or something you'd feature, and we can see what we can do. It's wonderful music, whoever requests it. That's about it. Look after yourselves. We will be back same time, same place, of course, next week. Look after yourselves. Cheerio. Cheerio.